Hi everyone and welcome to tonight's Thursday Night Live session. My name is Fiona Kelly, LYIT Marketing Manager and we're going to be joined by the team from the Department of Computing tonight to talk about all things computing at LYIT. So in terms of tonight's session we're going to be joined first of all by Thomas Dowling followed by John McGarvey, Lecturer in Computer Security and Digital Forensics and then we're going to be joined by third year Computing Security and Digital Forensics students, student Ryan Patton. So let's get started. We have a lot to cover tonight and we're going to start off with Thomas Dowling, the Head of Department of Computing. So Thomas, you're really welcome. Thank you very much, Fiona. It's good to be here. Good to be here. So let's get started, Thomas. We're going to talk tonight about the six CAO programs available in your, in your department. We're going to start off with a new program in healthcare innovation and um, technology. It's a level eight honours degree program. The program is also, I believe, available as a master's postgraduate program. But let's concentrate now tonight on that undergraduate program. So what is this program? Well, like a lot of aspects of computing, it's becoming the demand for people with specialist skills is huge and in this case the problem is that uh, healthcare systems are very complex the way hospitals work healthcare environments are very complex there's a huge amount of learning for the average computer science graduate to figure out how that all works so the idea is that you learn computing and you learn about how healthcare systems work so we've developed this with the department of nursing the department of law and the department of business studies and we go into everything from you know the stuff you'd expect in computing, governance, compliance, healthcare systems, uh, which would be thought by the Department of Nursing, uh, healthcare finance and, uh, from business studies, and then um, law and governance from the Department of Law. So it's yeah. a multidisciplinary course, and it's very much kind of one of the directions that we're seeing uh, internationally in terms of third level education. Um, to draw together multiple different mm -hmm. disciplines where it's necessary it's not always necessary for something like computer security it's not particularly necessary um, but for something like healthcare as you can imagine from the title yeah. uh, you need to be able to draw together multiple disciplines I think the fact that it's bringing together four different departments itself is unique in that it's a collaborative program. And it's also the fact, too, that the employment opportunities, this is almost like a future jobs degree as well, because this is very much the way forward for healthcare in terms of harnessing innovation, harnessing technology for the betterment of healthcare and healthcare systems. Yes, indeed. I mean, if you look at the complexity of healthcare today, and the aging population, the hugely expanding kind of range of different healthcare needs, the things that wouldn't have really been dealt with in the past that were barely recognized, uh, speech therapy and so on, then what you can see is that the amount of labor required to uh, modern healthcare is kind of unsustainable using the mm -hmm. traditional model of healthcare, which is just all about lots and lots and lots of bodies. So you need to automate. Now, I'm not talking about nurses becoming unemployed because uh, frankly, there'll probably never be enough nurses. There'll probably never be enough doctors. Really all we're talking about is the, the, the number of doctors and nurses being able to support constantly evolving ever more complex healthcare system. And the only way they can do that is with technology. So just as a for example, you could wear um, a watch which is monitoring your kind of vital statistics, your blood pressure, uh, things like that. It could, for example, warn you if you were having a stroke when you turn up to the doctor. Um, the doctor can ablate the data with the, the watch and tell all sorts of things about you know your your blood pressure over the last month and mm -hmm. things like that. Stuff that traditionally has been very difficult for a doctor to do. Um, very soon you'll be walking into any doctor's surgery, uh, wave your watch near a reader, very much the way we do now with the phones and, and, and payment machines, um, and it'll simply overlook, download all your data and the doctor will be able to look at that and they'll be able to see it visually, so they'll be kind of, rather than spending ages reading it, they'll be able to see simple, clear visual representations mm -hmm. of the data. Um, yeah. And that, that's and just then, thousands just... of applications. I suppose just in terms of I suppose graduate careers on that. So like opportunities in terms of jobs, what would they be from this degree, this level eight degree? 
thousands and thousands because there are literally hundreds of companies in Ireland alone developing computer applications to support healthcare. And at the moment, those companies, they're hiring nurses and doctors to give them the medical expertise. They're hiring computing graduates to give them the computing graduates uh, expertise. Have been educated and trained in hugely different backgrounds. It's very difficult for them to understand each other. It's very difficult for a computing graduate to have a deep understanding of what's required for healthcare systems. So the idea with these people is that they're a bridge between the two disciplines. And we're seeing that yes. more and more in computing and things like cyber psychology as well. Yeah, as well. And we'll talk about that as we progress through tonight. Um, so I'm going to change it up now and I'm going to go to go back to, I suppose, what was probably our original level eight program, um, the Applied Computing Honours Degree, yeah. um, LY708 CAO code. It's a four year level eight honours degree. Can we talk a little bit about this program? As I said, Thomas is one of our kind of first level eights um, in the space. Yeah, it, 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 it was the first level eight, and I think it was the second level eight in Letterkenny IT. It's been on the go now for over 20 years. And um, the name Applied Computing, we've stuck with it because it's got a lot of brand recognition. Uh, mm -hmm. But really, it's, it's a computer programming course. And the you know you do a lot of programming. You do about 240 credits over four years, which is standard wow. for a four year degree. And about half of that, uh, maybe a little bit more is programming. And the, the reason mm -hmm. for that is very simply that there's a huge shortage of good computers. because they are, as the saying would be like hen's teeth. <laughs> so plenty of job opportunities then. Um, in terms of this program in applied computing, you don't need to be doing computer science at leaving certificate level to be considered eligible for this program. Isn't that right? No, that's the difference between it and the three-year honours degree in computer science is that uh, it's designed for people who have done a general leaving certificate who don't have any particular expertise in computing, you know, the usual stuff that we all have browsing mm -hmm. the web and sending the email and looking at LinkedIn. And I'm sure the people listening are think I'm a dinosaur for talking about the web and LinkedIn. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, basic IT is all you need. Uh, yeah, so in terms and, of it. You know, the fields are kind of gearing up rapidly to deliver the computer science uh, subject, but that's still where the vast majority of yeah. the students are. Yeah, because not every secondary school has you, as you rightly point out, have computer science as a leaving certificate option, or maybe in terms of I suppose subjects in clashing, they may not actually have the chance to be able to um, uh, pick that subject because it may clash with another subject as well. Um, career prospects, one unique aspect, and I think it's important to highlight it is that you can actually progress into teaching from this program as well. You, you can, yes. It, um, it's recognized by the teaching council. It's a big section of how long it's been on the go. Um, so, yeah, there's absolutely no problem. You, you can definitely get into teaching qualifications with this. And a number of teachers around the county in secondary schools have done at the applied computing degree. Yeah, we're now going to move towards the program we've just touched on. And for anybody that's watching, if you do have any questions, please pop them um, either into the YouTube chat or also onto the Facebook page. And we'll go through them um, as we get to the Q&A section at the end. But we're going to talk about the BSc Honours in Computer Science. This is a relatively new program and it is geared towards students either at GCE, A level, who are doing either computing or technology, or it's geared mm -hmm. towards those leaving certificate students who are doing computer science. It's a fast track track three year level eight honors degree so applied computing is four years but this is open to those people who are kind of have got nearly the broad basis of first year done by having done this mm -hmm. at secondary school level isn't that correct yeah and um, this is the only three year honor uh, in computing in ireland i'm sure wow. now that some of our competitors will be copying us as quickly as they can <laughs> uh, but at the moment we're the only one to be running it um and it is the idea that if you have you know a few, um and i say a b or a c in honors computer science and the leaving search you're not going to be very happy if you're starting off with absolute first principles writing three lines of code uh, to get it to print hello world on the screen you know you you've done that two years ago so the idea here is that uh, you're in a position to come in and hit the ground running it's not necessarily the leaving circular science uh, subject 
is the equivalent of a year in college. And it's not. But the idea is that you're in a position to come in and hit the ground running. So you don't have to kind of spend a lot of time orientating yourself and kind of figuring out what's what and learning the basics. Yeah. The basics um, are kind so of done. Uh, yeah. So yeah. the basics are kind of done by the time you reach us. Um, in terms of this, this program, what kind of modules will you cover in terms of the computer science program? Um, it's a little bit like the applied computer. Um, programming, maybe a bit more sort of data science, artificial intelligence, neural networks, uh, mm -hmm. but it's a broad ranging uh, computing degree as title computer science would imply. Um, so you cover a bit of everything, some programming, infrastructure, how the internet works, data, um, all the main sorts of topics, very, very modest, it's just been written, it's absolutely bang up to date. Uh, numbers on the CAO, this they're looking very positive about twice yeah. what they were last year. Yeah, so and we're seeing see that across. Demand. Yeah, and we're seeing that across in quite a few of the computer programs. And um, we'll be chatting to John um, very soon now about computer security and digital forensics too. There definitely is more, I suppose, the market is seeing in terms of the undergraduate students that there are opportunities there, like endless amounts of jobs. Yeah. Oh, uh, absolutely endless amount of jobs. I mean, the, that three-year honours degree does have an option you can it's entirely up to yourself but you can take a year out between second and third year to do a placement as well and we'll help you with that that's just being that's fantastic this year. yeah um, and one and in, in terms of that opportunities. and in terms of that thomas i suppose it's important to highlight and probably should have highlighted um about applied computing am i right in saying you can go abroad and applied computing Yes, indeed. Um, no, COVID unfortunately kind of <laughs> stopped things for a while. But yeah, there's an option to stay abroad for a semester uh, in third year. And mm -hmm. We have linkages with a number of universities around Europe who teach through the medium of English. So there's about a dozen. Um, but actually, in the past, most of the students who have gone abroad have gone to China. We have very strong yeah, linkages with. Uh, um, a university in Sichuan province, absolutely, absolutely amazing campus. It's just so beautiful. Um, and um, I think quite a few of the parents of the students were afraid they weren't going to come back. They were so well looked after. <laughs> yeah, but again, it's a real draw to the programme, knowing that you have that opportunity to go abroad. And hopefully things have opened up now. So students coming in to LYIT in 2022 will have the prospect of being able to go away again, whether they're studying, studying the applied yeah. computing programme or taking that, as you say, optional year out. So that's LY748, the BSc Honours in Computer science again very much geared towards those students who are doing GCE a level in technology or computing or the computer science at leaving cert level another program that is really popular is computer games development and it's a level seven bachelor degree so Thomas let's talk about computer games development what is it what will you cover yeah, well, again, another course that's, I think all of our computing courses are up this year on the CEO, uh, and this one is as well. Um, and it's not an over-specialized course. Some, in some colleges do very, very specialized courses. Um, we believe in sort of doing computing with the specialism because, you know, over the next 20 years, who knows what you're going to want to do. Um, so about a course is computer games, about two thirds of the course is general computing. Um, and in the games, you do everything from learning kind of how you play boards, which you wonder, well, why do I want to know that? But actually, there's quite a lot of game theory behind how you do, how board games are designed. It's, it's not sort of quasi-random. Um, mm -hmm. And all the way up to uh, designing um, figures, you know, doing the graph, using tools uh, to, to, to create the figures, importing them into the games, using the game engine. Um, to animate them and to do things and to play games and you know build levels yeah. and all that sort of thing and yeah, the students so it takes you the right portfolio. and you start off again start off with the basics and then you evolve and develop yeah. um as the program goes on we're having a wee bit of glitch in there thomas on your side in terms of intermittently but um hopefully it's not coming across too heavy um in terms of that but uh in terms of i suppose student competitions some of our students have participated in really interesting competitions mash mass digi for example would that be right Yes, uh, near Boston, there's a college which runs a mass digi competition. It's a very high profile American competition. 
Um, you'll find students coming there from MIT and Harvard, among other places. Mm -hmm. And we are the only college in Europe that uh, has been invited to send a team. Uh, that's a reflection, yeah. I think, of the very strong links that we have in Letterkenny uh, with Boston, with a lot of the companies and the colleges out in Boston. Um, and again, COVID unfortunately stopped things for a while, but the tradition is that every year we send two students 16 weeks over the um, and we pay for their travel expenses and they're there, they're provided with accommodation and a basic stipend and, and they work with the American students. So there's uh, one Irish student in each team and the rest of them are American students. Um, so it's a really, really good sort of international experience. And I know that our students are particularly sought after because the Americans have told us that our students tend to do a lot more game programming than the American students do. Whereas the American students do more design, our students are really strong in the programming relative to the American students. Yeah. So again, I suppose it makes them stand out really compared then with other students from other programs internationally. Oh, I, I, absolutely. And um, we have we have had uh, American visitors, uh, John Romero, for example, who created Doom. Uh, the, the first first person shooter ever created uh, was with us a couple of years back uh, to do workshops with our students. His wife, Brenda Romero, as well, who has several of her game designs in the Smithsonian Museum, uh, was along uh, as well. And they both gave a series of workshops to our students for a week. And we've kept in contact with them and we've had students go out to the, visit them in California to attend game expos. So it's a wow. really, really strong course. Yeah. That's really, I suppose, that's one thing, and it's important that you highlighted that. It's important, I suppose, to say that as a smaller institution where you're not going to be in a class with 300 people, it's opportunities like that that make you stand out then when you do graduate and being able to connect with people like you mentioned, like that's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I, I think this is the, the huge cultural difference between a small college and a large college. Uh, one of my colleagues uh, who thought in, well, we'll say one of the larger Irish universities, the saying when she thought there, she had one door that she went in and out and the students had a different door that they went in and out so that she'd never have to meet them. That was the philosophy of wow. the university. <laughs> uh, this was only a couple of years ago. I'm not talking 20 or 30 years ago. Um, you know, whereas our students uh, will go to hackathons in the case of security, John uh, McGarvey, soon. Um, you know, we literally took our students to hackathons um, and our lecturers went over uh, to Mass Digi in America and with Games Expos and things like that. You know, we yeah. value having a strong interaction with our students. Yeah, and that's what makes it stand out, I do believe so. And you find that actually when in the space that we are in here tonight um, and, the, and the marketing team, that you hear that message coming through from students when we're doing student videos. It's that sense of community and being able to be part of something and leave then actually having got to do loads of things that maybe you wouldn't have got a shot at in a larger institution. The last program I'm going to talk to you about um, at undergraduate level is the level seven in computing. That's a broad spectrum bachelor degree level level seven. One thing I do want to highlight is, is that if you're filling in your CAO or you're thinking about the change of mind in May time, know you have 10 level eight choices and you've 10 level six, seven choices. And what's great about your department, Thomas, is you've computing in both sections of the CAO. So you really are hitting program area options for all learners, all types of students, whether you're a student who really excels academically and is expecting to achieve really high points or a student that's maybe more middle of the road. These programs give shots to everybody so the level seven is that broad computing degree yeah yes indeed um it, it's a bit like applied computing is maybe not quite as heavy in the programming uh but it's a broad general degree in computing and it's probably the most popular course we have because a lot of people know they want to do computing but they don't feel, really feel ready yet to decide i want to do a specific area of computing mm -hmm. which is very reasonable and you'll find a lot of those students coming in doing a general degree in computing, maybe going out working, do a couple of jobs, find out what they like doing, and then maybe, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry, coming back part time to do a master's. And uh, that, that works really, really well for them. Um, and 
there's absolutely huge demand for these graduates. We get a lot of them leaving at the end of third year with their level seven or three yeah. degree going into the workforce. Um, and but then I think kind of the the maybe the more ambitious student or um, the student maybe that's just enjoying themselves in college is happy to stay on and do fourth year and get their honors degree. Um, but you know things are so incredibly flexible now that there's just endless endless kind of opportunities yeah. in terms of going out and coming back and doing top-up degrees online doing a top-up masters online um that the environment is completely different for a student in relative to what it was 10 years ago yeah. when things were really sort of quite rigid in terms of how static you had to very, yeah, very compared static, to, yeah. Um, and now even COVID, I suppose Thomas has made that a bit more flexible in terms of the, the opportunities in terms of flexible learning. And for those students that maybe leave with the level seven and wanted to come back, there are more opportunities then to do like the level eight top up as an online option and, and things like that. Now, Thomas, we're going to give you a break now. And now we're going to change things up a little. And we're going to speak to lecturer John McGarvey. And we're going to talk to John McGarvey, who is the I suppose the guru when it comes to all things computer security and digital forensics and we're going to talk to you John about the Bachelor of Science in Computer Security and Digital Forensics so you're welcome to your first I think it's Hi, your Fiona. first Facebook Live. Thank you. Yes it is I think it is yeah. Yeah well it's you're great to be here. It's great to have you. Um, so let's talk about the program. Um, it's a level seven it's a three-year bachelor degree can you tell me about computer security and digital forensics? Well, it shares quite a few modules with uh, regular computing. So that'd be programming, computer architecture, networking, databases, and so on. But what makes it unique is the fact that a long time ago, we redesigned the course, uh, the cybersecurity course, really to, uh, to fit two streams. And the two streams are digital forensics, and there's a whole set of skills that we develop from year one to year three and, and on to year four. And then there's the kind of ethical hacking cybersecurity stream. So these streams, uh, there's modules in each semester where they develop their skills. The skills would be think, start off, let's say, in the cybersecurity uh, stream, and it would be skills such as risk assessment, um, then moving on to ethical hacking, um, looking at GDPR, um, moving on then to more advanced uh, hacking skill sets. Finally, then looking at web application security and uh, and moving on then. In, in, in year three, then they would look at secure programming. And then in the final year, they're doing more interesting kind of unique cybersecurity sort of courses like cryptography, stenography, uh, image processing, and so on. Yeah. So really, the, the, what, what makes our courses was unique is the fact that it's the longest running cybersecurity undergrad in the country uh, wow. and we're quite well known as producing graduates that are ready ready to actually you know add to a team in in at both smaller companies and larger kind of multinationals yeah. as well well i think it's really I think what was really unique and, and in preparation for this, we were chatting about your program, the program yes. that you deliver on, is the fact that you have this program available as your CAO undergraduate program, but it's also available in a flexible way because of the demand. Yes, uh, basically, uh... I suppose there there are people all over the country, and they want to they don't want to have to travel to Letterkenny, so they're they're doing a lot of these modules online as part of the uh, the degree in cybersecurity. So it it is a very attractive um, mm -hmm. job, uh, simply because of the amount of uh, various different types of roles out there. Uh, one thing that the cybersecurity degree does is it equips you really to to work in maybe risk assessment or vulnerability management, or maybe as part of a uh, secure security operations center which really has seven or eight different roles within it so uh, there's so many different ty different types of uh, jobs in cybersecurity that uh, and not that not even leaving out the digital forensics an awful lot of our graduates do work in in digital forensics which is slightly different to to cybersecurity but augments it yeah and again i suppose it's been so topical and probably a reason why it's probably i suppose demand ways then we see we've seen an increase across all our computing programs in terms yes. of ceo applications this year but the fact that i suppose the, the major hse hack last year a lot of people now are fully aware of computer security and digital forensics and how important it is um in terms of the computing um discipline 
And what we're going to see is we're probably going to see, unfortunately, we're going to see more of those type of hacks. Uh, you know, there's an in, in different industries. What what I'm trying to prepare our students for now is looking at not just at the IT security, but at the operational technology security as well. So that's cybersecurity for pharmaceutical plants, um, you know, manufacturing, even farming and agri. You know, it's, mm -hmm. hacking is going to take place in, in every type of industry. Uh, you know whether we want to or not it's just going to happen so we need to have yeah. the skill set to be able to investigate examine and see why these uh breaches occur or why these attacks occur so yeah you're just a wealth really of knowledge when it develop. comes to this area john to be fair like um so in terms of this program who might enjoy the program i suppose anyone that's uh, that's into analyzing or investigating or even somebody like one of the first uh, practicals that i uh, you know do with my students in first year is a footprinting exercise where they have to go and research somebody else in the class that they maybe don't know so they have to find out maybe their date of birth and a whole lot of personal information about them that really that starts to build a picture because that's one thing one of the first phases of hacking is reconnaissance and it's just it's kind of we do it at a fun level we don't do it at a, you know at a mm -hmm. highly detailed because you know of gdpr issues and so on but it is a, an exercise that they enjoy and it's really as I teach, I teach Introduction to Ethical Hacking and Advanced Ethical Hacking and Web App Security and a few other modules. But I, as I see them, you know, move on from semester to semester, I see them change and become more security aware. And, you know, by the time I'm finished with them, they're just they're very different people. Yeah. But again, you and, start uh, you start that exploration from first year in terms of yeah. investigating and trying to drill down information and then and it builds up towards it. Um, in terms of graduate careers, and then we're going to move towards Ryan, but in terms of graduate career prospects, they're probably like what Thomas said, a lot of opportunities, they're endless really in computing. Would that be fair yeah. enough to say? Yeah, generally they'll work either as part of what's known as a dynamic uh, security testing team. Um so that's kind of more pen testing and application security and web app security, or sometimes they'll work in static analysis, which is more looking at how programmers code and making sure that they're mm -hmm. secure and so on. Um, but there's also just like we have, we had uh, our graduate, I don't know how many years ago now, five or six anyway, he set up his own company, uh, Philip Close, and he set up Sakura Consulting, which is locally based here in Donegal, but has clients all over uh, Europe and is you know, consulting and doing pen testing and other forms of uh, wow. cybersecurity testing. So it's great to see yeah. that it not just yeah. we have Tata as well and Optum, which a lot of our graduates would go to as well. And we're glad to have yeah. them. Yeah, in terms of our doorstep. Um, so yeah. at, I'm going to give you a break now, John, and we're going to introduce then Ryan Patton, who's a current third year student and one of um, John's students. And, and Ryan, you're welcome. Hello, Fiona. So it's Thanks great to have me. you here. Yeah, that's great to have you. So you're a third year student in computer security and digital forensics. So, Ryan, can you tell me what you enjoy most about the program? Um, probably what I enjoy most is kind of the variety of things that you get to do. Like the other courses are mentioned, like like we share a lot of classes, like all programming classes and general network and things. We do share them classes with the other courses, but there's certain there's certain things that they just don't get to do and a lot of the security aspects obviously we get to experience that and the different forensics and then there's even like the variety of things you get to do. like we get to do different like there's a law module and you get to learn about all the different ways that them them kind of ideas can be applied and the different directions that can go so it just gives you kind of more scope for what you want to do you're not kind of set down this narrow path of maybe being some sort of network administrator or a programmer, you could literally go anywhere. You could be some of the consults for court cases if you're in, like, in the digital forensics aspect, um, investigating things, or you can go and you can be testing applications, as John said, and you could be a network engineer and secure and networks and stuff. So like it just, it allows you to do so much more, even though you might not yeah. have did that much of everything because you're trying to get that much in. But yeah, you've got such a wider variety of what you might like and kind of discover what where your interests are. Yeah, and I think it's probably a course that would suit somebody with a curious mind. 
um, because yeah, I, as as John mentioned there, and I don't know whether John put you through that test in first year. Do you recall that having to? It's actually it was we didn't have John for that module. I think he was off doing his PhD or something, so we had okay. a different lecture. Okay, a little but bit we, busy, but it was the same. <laughs> but we did the same. We did the same thing, and I remember doing that, and everyone trying to figure everything about everyone else. So it, it's kind of. Yeah, it's, it's kind of one of those ones that's suited to a certain type of mindset. Yeah, um, and encouraging and, that probing and cur encouraging the invest investigation from early on. Yeah, and trying, trying to figure out how things work and why why things aren't working or the way things break. That's kind of that's kind of a major thing is figuring out how something yeah. breaks so you know how to make it better. And um, have you yeah. enjoyed have you enjoyed studying on the course? I definitely have. Yeah. I would say it's probably, it's probably, it was probably doing the course probably the first time that I can say I thoroughly enjoyed doing things like from a, what would you say, an, like an academic learning point of view. Like yeah, it's, it's education very, perspective, yeah. Because, because it's like a lot of the time it always felt very kind of pointless in secondary mm -hmm. school, even if you feel like that in secondary school, but like it felt a lot of the time like you're actually doing something that you could actually go somewhere with or do something so it yeah. felt kind of meaningful yeah very early on in your own um academic career here at lyt because you're only a third year student but you've packed a lot in you actually did an internship was that right yeah i did in primerica the company that now tcs but I did, at the end of first year for the summer um i did an internship so i'd applied for that this like the november i just started the mm -hmm. course and went through all the interview process and all that and then COVID happened so everyone kind of thought well that's not going to happen but then we got word that they were going to go ahead with it in COVID so we actually did the mm -hmm. internship remote and wow. did that from home so it was kind of we were figured out as interns how much to do it as even the people working in Primerica were so it was it was an interesting yeah. experience yeah and learning it was definitely together helpful. yeah for sure and in terms of yourself your future plans what are your future plans Rain? Well, it's kind of hard to say because it's, when I'm doing the different modules, there's that many areas interested in me. Like, I really enjoyed the hacking aspect with John, and then a lot of the networking stuff also interested me. So, I feel like I would probably go into some sort of cybersecurity engineer role, but maybe even like a network engineer, network security engineer would probably be the type of area I would want to head. But even for the first year, few years of my career, I would probably, I don't really mind what I do because it's all kind of interesting in the in that area yeah um, and if you were to go back and this is the million dollar question now uh, Ryan <laughs> would you choose this program again I think I would yeah 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 um why would I choose it um it's hard to say I like I've, I don't have anything to compare it to, but I, apart from secondary school, like I didn't do any yeah. other courses, but, but I think what you I did do answered felt that. very, yeah, yeah kinda, comfortable. Yeah, in terms yeah. of that, I suppose, say, highlighting that you don't feel like it's even a struggle for you, you're enjoying yes. it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the way I'd describe it. It was kind of, it just suited me. Yeah, suit you. Well, I'm going to take online. you back on in a couple of minutes. I'm just going to wrap up now with Thomas Dowling. I'm going to bring Thomas back. Rain, you've been brilliant. Um, and we have a few questions then too for John and for Rain. So we're going to come back to you guys in a little minute. But um, I'm just going to wrap up with you, Thomas, because I know, I know we had our postgraduate event a couple of weeks back. But I just want to touch on part-time postgraduate programs just quickly. One in particular we mentioned earlier, cyber psychology. Um, we do have DevOps with enterprise application um, development we also have cyber security we have big data oh my gosh um, am I leaving anything out there's quite a few <laughs> um, in terms of program areas but cyber psychology just can we touch on that what is it yeah we have a master's in cyber psychology and hopefully in about two weeks time we'll have an honors degree in cyber psychology also validated wow. which should be going up on the CAO change of mind pretty quickly all going well um, and cyber psychology is the interface between psychology and computing. Again, it's a bit like healthcare. It's very difficult for psychologists to understand how computing systems work at a deep level. It's very difficult for 
computer scientists to understand at a deep level how people work uh, with computers. And that sounds like, well, sure, we know how people work with computers because we all do it. Well, think about the fact that Apple is a three trillion dollar company. I think it's one of the most valuable companies in the world. Why? Because Apple products are slightly easier to use than other product than other products, other phones. Okay, so slightly easier to use is worth three trillion dollars. <laughs> it is worth having computer people on your team who understand the psychology of how people work with computer systems. And that is what cyber psychology is. So, mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's an area with absolutely huge demand because yeah. everyone is trying to build a very, very, very slightly better computer system. You know the saying, yeah. if, if you build a, a better mousetrap, the world will be to pop to your door. Well, if you can build a slightly better interface on your f phone, it, you'll be worth three, three trillion dollars. <laughs> yeah, I would expect now that this program is going to be of interest to others. Perhaps if it maybe was in the market um, at the time when Ryan was making his choices, he would have had a bit of a, a decision to make too when it comes to cyber psychology versus computer security and digital forensics, because he has that curious mind that would be interested mm -hmm. in this program area. Look, you're you're leading a very progressive department. We're not here now this evening to drill down necessarily on the part-time postgraduate programs mm -hmm. but some programs for instance we have the higher diploma in computer for educators with computer mm -hmm. science education research as i mentioned mm -hmm. dev ops ead cyber security cyber psychology constantly developing constantly evolving yeah. but if i was to ask you to wrap up i suppose in terms of where you're at what sets your department apart what would it be thomas we have a huge range of courses from degree to doctorate. We are probably nearly the only computing department in the country that has the same number of undergraduate and postgraduate students, which tells you the level at which our staff are working. Um, there's about a thousand students, which are split between campus and online. Uh, again, pretty close to 50-50. It's a hugely progressive department with people from all over the world, Pakistan, India, Mexico, um, Europe. And it's really somewhere that you should be looking at to come and study because you absolutely will not be, have better opportunities to do your degree, to go into industry, to go on and do a doctorate, whatever you want, you can do it with us. And if you want to go to China or you want to go and study in France or Austria or Germany, absolutely no problem at all. You can do that with our partner colleges. Yeah, so lots to think about in terms of options. So we're going to bring back John and we're going to bring back Ryan now and we're going to wrap up because there's some questions that have come in. Um, I'm going to go to you um, first, Ryan. Ryan, outside of the classroom, what's student life like is in terms of activities? Have you been involved in student life? What is student life like? Um like in the college itself it's like there's a nice atmosphere like mm -hmm. it doesn't it's it doesn't seem like everyone seems kind of happy and <laughs> like the, like i didn't i don't really have much involvement in like nightlife or any of that in the kind of student aspect but um the like there's in first year covid kind of got rid of some things like there was a like it was part of the, the hacking club and the things like that in first year um which was kind of like it gave you insight into the things that you kind of got to do you wouldn't get to do to later in the course or you mightn't even have got to do in the course because it was very very specific things and i know that like they go to zero days and things like that which are all yeah like competition outside of the actual yeah things yeah. like that yeah. um but so there's opportunities there's like that. There's a lot of things like that that are very beneficial and like they're enjoyable. Yeah, um, it makes stand out. I want to now yeah. um, ask you a question, uh, John. Computer security, do you need to do a master's at the end of it in cyber if you do the computer security and digital forensics degree? Uh, no, no. Most of our, most of our um, graduates get employment even at the end of year three was a big issue for us a number of years ago and certainly by the end of year four it's it's you know it's it's absolutely you'll, you'll have your choice in fact most people would have jobs around april time 
March, April. Oh, wow. Um, so before you even graduate, so, there's opportunities. Another question for you, absolutely. John, I'm going to throw, throw it at you, if you don't mind. Um, previous employers or past employers, current employers, who is recruiting from LYIT in your area? In the area would be uh, TCS, uh, Tata and uh, Optum. And then also we have a number in the smaller ones like, well, there's CETA as well, but also uh, Sakura have taken a number of our graduates. I think they've taken two or three, relatively small company and so on. HP in Galway as well, is where a number mm -hmm. of our graduates have gone. And then uh, Integrity 360 in Dublin, well quite a few of our graduates yeah. and and they and like and I, i'm in contact with them i have an alumni um on linkedin of cybersecurity, and we see we see their career progression as they go through quite a lot of them are in quite senior roles now at the minute yeah so again that progression opportunity and that's important to highlight that too john actually um uh thomas can i do a work placement on the computer programs so ryan mentioned about doing a placement in between the first year and second year but what way does that work in terms of placements is a good question i suppose yeah a lot of employers like to take someone on for the summer um to see yeah. what they're like because it's it's um you know it's a trial run basically and you very often mm -hmm. see the same students going back then after graduation working for the employer so they work for the employer for about three months they're usually paid not always it depends a bit on the size of the company um, and they also get for that a certificate in industry studies so we offer our students the opportunity to know a number of additional certificates over and above their basic degree and it can be peer mentoring or industry studies and uh, civic and social engagement maybe if they work with charities um, so yeah, quite a proportion of the students, um, if they are, want to do it, they have an opportunity to do a placement typically between third and fourth year, but often as well between second and third year. That's good. Um, and the really, really, really keen students do it between first and second year. Like Ryan. So good on you, Ryan, yeah. in terms of your own uh, progression. Um, and just finally now, Thomas, this last question to you, because I know I'm conscious that we're running over, but I could chat to you three all night. Um, so applying as an international student. How do I do this? How do I go about it? So a bit of advice there, Thomas? Just have a look at our website and look for the international section on our website. And it's a really, really simple, easy system. The fees are very reasonable, particularly in comparison to countries like the UK or America. Um, and um, you will be stay, really, really well yeah, looked after. Stay back visas mm -hmm. as well. There are stay yes, back indeed. visas as well. Yeah, if you do an undergraduate degree, you're entitled to a stay back visa for one year, which allows you to work. You're allowed to work while you're doing your degree, 20 hours a week. And then when you graduate, you're entitled to work full time. There's plenty of work, absolutely plenty of work. There's no problem yeah. at all. Don't worry about that yeah. for international students. Um, but you can extend the stay back visa. It's two years for masters, one year for a degree. But it doesn't really matter that much because, uh, you know, if once you're in employment, you can extend it uh, for as long as you want. There, Ireland is more than happy to take in good computing graduates. Yeah. It's a critical Thanks, skill visa area. That's fantastic. Okay, so that's us. That wraps up tonight's Department of Computing session. I really want to thank John and Ryan for spotlighting the Computer Security and Digital Forensics program. As a marketer, you've even convinced me um, to, to look at these um, programs further for somebody who's non-tech. But um, again, so engaging, so interesting, and great to get the student and staff perspective in this space. Thomas, thanks again for joining us as the head of Department of Computing. I understand how busy you are and taking time out of your own busy schedule to join us. Um, has been fantastic over the last few weeks. Um, so next week we're going to be joined by the Department of Tourism and Sport. We're going to be joined by um, Nicola Dunyan, the Head of Department of Tourism and Sport. And also on that session we're going to be joined by Dr. Ken Van Summeren and we're going to profile sports and exercise with rehabilitation. For now, this wraps up tonight's Department of Computing Thursday Night Live session. You can always watch us back. If you want to find out more, you can email fiona.kelly at lyit.ie thomas.dowling at lyit .ie or john.mcgarvey at lyit.ie. Good night and thanks for watching.